Here we are continuing the process of actually working on the electric hand and I'm going to show you how I take the floor out. That's a nice thing about a terraplane is that the floor is in fact removable. But it is a multi-step process. The base of your accelerator will have a clevis pin. You'll have to remove a cotter pin from there. It takes a little bit of doing. Now this particular setup I have here is a replacement clevis pin, but it works really well and nobody can see it anyway. There you go, that's undone. Now you can see I'm working on taking the top of the accelerator pedal loose. Again, you've got a clevis pin set up on a terraplane that you have to undo with a cotter pin. And unfortunately, as you'll find out yourself, you kind of can't look at what you're doing. You have to do a lot of it by feel. Couldn't quite get it from the other side, so I've switched sides to where I can actually get a hold of the cotter pin. Now I'm using a side cutters to remove the cotter pin. It tends to work reasonably well. There we go, undone. Take the little bellows off your accelerator pedal rod. Now over here on the side, I'm using a little power portable screwdriver. Let's take the screws out of the door sill trim because door sill trim generally captivates part of the floor rubber. And so you gotta at least loosen some of them, if not take the door sill rubber, I uh, pardon me, trim completely off to get the rubber out. And realistically, I usually only have to do this on one side of the car. Obviously, this is the passenger side of the car. Okay, you see I fold the rubber back across the car so that I can leave it on the driver's side. And you can kind of see where the floor is now and the panel that's going to have to come out. Now, there's a whole series of bolts all the way around the outside edge. The lower bolts are different size from the upper bolts. Lower bolts are 9 16 head. The upper bolts are half inch head. So just working on this with a ratchet and gradually going around and removing them all. I never put these in overly tight. They're just nice and snugged up each time so I don't wear anything out since this will be done whenever you might want to service something relative to the transmission. And you'll notice I tend to like to wear gloves because uh, the grease and oil, it's hard on your hands. Yeah, if you don't like to do that, don't do it. All right. Here we're going further and I have to get the rubber a little bit out of the way in this area. And again, I'm not going to completely remove the rubber because it just adds a whole another dimension of work that you don't really need to do to take the center floor section out. One of the things that I did to make sure this all works out real well, and I believe it's the way Hudson had it anyway, is you have a bolt, a lock washer, and then a washer. Because a lock washer won't work with the hole. I try to keep them all together as I take them out. 
Now most of them you can take out with a ratchet wrench. There's one up by the steering column I always have to take out by hand with a regular wrench. And that's a bolt I've got shorter on purpose because it's easier to do it with a shorter bolt. And that's the bolt I was talking about. That's the one you have to do with a hand wrench in the car. It just there just isn't quite enough room to get the ratcheting system in there, so I do it by hand up there on the top. More work on that top bolt that's so hard to get to. And just, I've never found a better way for this. Just keep working on it and work. Right, what have you done? One, it's practically one little flat on the nut, uh, pardon me, bolt at a time to get this one out. Here I'm trying to take the floor out, and unfortunately I forgot something. Easy to forget because everything's been done on the front side of the floor. You have to go around on the back side of the floor and disconnect the accelerator rod. Another clevis pin with a cotter pin you've got to pull. Otherwise you can't take the floor out. So I've gone back to do that now. Another thing that's sort of been skipped here is you can see that I've removed the brake pedal. That also had to be done. Okay, so now the assembly is out of the way. And there you have the actual transmission, which is a standard transmission that's used in all terraplanes. All the electric hand items are added onto the system. So they're added onto the standard system. Now we're looking from the driver's side back towards the passenger side. The black oh, loom coming from the top is major electric hand wiring coming from the steering column and other points on the driver's side. The unit right there you're looking at that I'm trying to remove a clevis pin from the end of it, that is the actual electric hand system that's added on to the side of the transmission for the shifting. And there are two clevis pins you've got to remove. Um, pardon me, there's one that's a clevis pin and one that's a rod, really, more than a clevis pin. Um, but you have to take out the, pin, the cotter pin out of the rod that I just took out, and that goes to a switch. Then you have to also take out the clevis pin at the front, and you have to pop out all those wires. Nice thing about the wires is on top of the electric hand, each one of those points has the actual color of the wire listed, so it's easy to get them back in the exact same spot. The rest of the wires on the top of the electric hand unit there actually go to a switch inside of the electric hand unit. They come off with the electric hand unit itself. Now you'll notice I'm coming in with a power screwdriver, taking out a little screw in the top here. I have an extra ground wire on here just in case. The electric hand system moves around enough you'd think you wouldn't have a problem but I found early on it didn't work as well without the extra ground wire so the extra ground wire was added just to make sure that it absolutely grounds the electric hand so that it will operate correctly. Yep, put the screw back so we don't lose it. 
Now, what I didn't show you was the fact that I weaseled that thing out of there and it was weaseled out, uh, basically working it down through the bottom. That requires the removal of the hardware holding the electric hand to the actual bracket on the transmission. And it just wasn't easy for me to film that for you because it, I would have been in the way the whole time. So realistically, there are two bolts or two fasteners down there you must undo. They're nuts and take them off so you can remove the system from the vehicle. Now I have it here on the workbench and what I'm doing is using a um, shop rag that's got some kerosene on it so that you can clean off all the oil and stuff. It's impossible that it won't get oily from being where it is on the car. So I'm cleaning it up before I actually do anything with it. And considering where it is, it isn't all that bad, but I hate to work on something that's messy when I can at least clean it off. It takes a little bit of work to do it, but it's not too hard. And nothing beats kerosene for this, so if you aren't using it, you're probably using the wrong thing. Because kerosene just really does a good job with this. And it doesn't take the paint off and allows you to clean it up real nice. Now a little rubber boot there where the wires go into the switch on the electric hand. That little rubber boot isn't exactly like original. It was the only thing I could find that would fit. And I used uh, some safety wire to hold it on. It's really just to keep dirt from going into the end of the switch. Now what I'm going to do here is take the switch out. Because of course the system hasn't been shifting well. And I want to see what the condition of the switch actually is at this point. So two screws to remove. And the switch will actually be possible to gently take out. All right, there she is, gently out of the housing. Now one of the things I noticed right away is the gaskets here were just shot. And right now I'm checking the actual switch contacts inside to see if there's burning, pitting, dirt, etc. And because the gaskets here are shot, there's actually, you can kind of see there's oil in here and it's too much. It shouldn't really be all oily like that. So I'm going to end up cleaning this up a bit. The way the switch works by... By the way, the two black pieces on the end of the switch you can see there, there is a little round knob that is actuating those two black pieces and pushing those pieces, they're actually bake light, pushing them apart and causing them to be contact on one side or the other of the center of that switch. That little round knob is connected to a mechanism that works inside the cylinder itself. So again, I'm looking at this real carefully to try to see what, if anything, might be wrong with this. Is there anything broken? Is it just dirty? Just oily? Is it a combination? What exactly is wrong? Now finally, having looked at it pretty heavily, I'm going to clean this off. And this, you can see I'm using a little carbon choke cleaner and spraying it off real heavily into an old tomato can. So I don't get it on the electric hand strip paint there, but I get the stuff cleaned out real well. I'm going to wipe off some more of the residue that I'm finding on it. As I said, I've already noticed that the gaskets here aren't good. And they're going to have to be replaced later on. Now I'm going to look down inside and see what I see inside of the housing that that switch goes into. See if there's something wrong in there. And so far I'm finding nothing to justify that the switch is broken at all. Everything looks to be just fine from that standpoint. Just dirty. So we'll keep you up on this and the next episode go through more of how to fix an electric hand. Thank <laughs> you.